Welcome to Abnormal Presence Touring Talkies. I'm Kamla Ayer, and uh, my guest today is a very special person who actually needs no introduction because her name is synonymous with uh, traditional hand painted kalamkari worldwide. She's a maths graduate from the temple town of Tirupati who turned to textile designing and then becoming a revivalist of the traditional hand-painted Kalamkari. She has worked with numerous renowned designers in India. If I were to name just a few, it would be Gaurang Shah, uh, Sapya Sachi, uh, Shashikant Naidu, and many, many more. She also is a faculty in the Creative Arts Department in IIT Hyderabad. I am very fortunate that I count her among one of my dear friends. And when I told her that I want to actually start the series and I want to interview you, she simply agreed in a jiffy. I am so fortunate, privileged and honored today to introduce to all of you, Mamata Reddy from Kalam Creations. Mamata, indeed a complete privilege and honor to have you. Welcome Ma, to the show. Thank you, Kamla. It's really nice to be in your show. Welcome. Tell us uh, at the very start, what exactly is Kalamkari? When did this originate? How old is this art form? Uh, you know, where all in India is it practiced? And you know, what are the differences? Because, you know, coming from you, that's like an authoritative statement. Kalamkari is a freehand painting uh, using uh, natural dyes. Kalam means pen, kari means work. The work done with uh, kalam is uh, called kalam. In This is actually a temple art. In olden days, uh, they used to put this wall hanging in front of the deity when they used to give the uh, naivedyam. Mm. So, in olden days, it's uh, basically used in temples. Otherwise, it's uh, the kalamkari uh, cloth is used to depict uh, mythological themes in the villages, and uh, uh, in it's like a theater, more or less like uh, it's used like a theater. It's called chitrapata. Okay. And yeah, we have uh, two types of uh, kalamkari. One is uh, machli patnam kalamkari, where they use blocks to do the designs and everything. And second one is a hand painted kalamkari, which is done in Srikala. And uh, there is no proper documented evidence when uh, this is started, uh, but it says like 3000 BC. It started okay. in Asia. The people, like historians, will uh, say. And okay. the craft is originated during the period of uh, Sri, Sri Krishna Devaraya. Okay. Times and uh, uh, later it was uh, patronized by Kamla Devi uh, Chattopadhyay. Uh, she opened a training center in Sri Kalahasti in 1957 uh, with a batch of uh, six painters actually. Okay. The uh, now production center's name is Pilot Kalampari Training Center and it's uh, undertaken by All India Handicraft Board. Like if we take like uh, Kalampari styling is done only in uh, three hand paint. Anything with natural dyes is uh, in Tamil Nadu, it's done in uh, Sikinai Kampe. Yeah, and uh, but yeah. their style is entirely different. It's um, basically bold designs. Mm -hmm. And they used to do only tumbas in the temples, like long uh, cloth hangings. Yeah. And in uh, Majli Patnam, they used to make yardage and uh, like uh, bed sheets and everything. And in uh, Orissa, it's called uh, <clears throat> Patachitra Ahmedabad, it's called Matani Pacheri. The technique is they everywhere it's, they use natural dyes, but the technique depends on uh, state to state, it varies. Right. You have been involved with Kalamkari uh, how long? Uh, because you know, uh, you know, you told me that you're a maths graduate who then moved to art. So, how long have you been doing this? And what brought it's you to been this? It's been around 23 years, Kamla. Like, wow. <laughs> Tirupati being my native place, and Kalahasti is just 15 kilometers from my hometown. So, okay. That's how you started. It's been more than 23 years. 
Right. And how how was your journey in the last 23 years? How was it back then? You know, how was your journey? Back then, I met one of the <coughs> master painter in one of the exhibitions who was selling his uh, wall pieces. Mm -hmm. So I was attracted to that piece and uh, with my pocket money, I bought a uh, wall panel. It's a huge wall panel. It's around 10 feet by 9 feet panel. It's a Rama for 5,000 in those days, like 20 to 23 years back. When I came back, my mom shouted at me because then they, nobody like spent such a, like 23 years back, 5,000 is a big amount for in my family. And they were like, why you want to do? I said like, this is a beautiful art, but there is nobody to purchase. So I just want to help the artist. So that's how my journey started into Kalamkari. I don't know that this is happening like 15 kilometers away from my hometown so when i bought the painting i want to meet the artisan at his house so i traveled uh, by bus to the painter's house and i asked him to make a uh, few samples uh, for me i just want to do some experiments he was like a lot of uh, painters in the initial stages they were really really reluctant to work with me Hmm. And um, finally, one guy was like really nice, like, um, and he said, like, Chalo, I will do whatever you want to do, but don't waste your time with uh, Kalamkari. I said, no, no, I just want to experiment because wall panels nobody will take, like, once, yeah. once for one household, maybe. Correct. But I want to make it, uh, make uh, Kalamkari like uh, cushion covers and wall hangings, uh, like. Uh, Thorns and everything. So I said, like, let's try our luck. And then I started cushion covers. Uh, Zodiac signs is my first designs in Kalamkar. Okay. And then you moved to uh, family. Then, uh, I started, uh, like, I started uh, associated uh, associating with the Craft Council of India, Craft right. Council of Andhra Pradesh. And Craft Council of Andhra India is my first uh, exhibition. So they, when they asked me to come for the exhibition, they asked for dupa, saris and dupattas. Dupattas we started already, but saris is a really big task because here back home, uh, they used to do only small, small wall panels. And uh, then they asked me to do sari, six meters of sari at a time, sketching, drawing, and it's it's really laborious process back then. So we trial, tried a few cotton saris and it was a fail. Like I, Then I said, like, what to do with all the stocks? Then I got mm -hmm. the idea, like, let me tie the body. And uh, it was a super hit in those days. Hmm. And uh, then we started doing, instead of leaving the body plain, we started, though it is a little bit expensive, we started doing all over designs. Okay. So slowly trial and error basis may like 23 years. Now, if you do any design, any kind of design on any material right now, we are ready to do. <laughs> yes, and we have seen a lot of that work of yours across uh, materials. So that's a question for later. Actually, uh, to start with, I actually read up that the Kalapkari process is so intensive, labor intensive and time intensive. Uh, it has got some 20 plus steps uh, and all that. Is that really true? Is that how laborious the process is? Yeah, it's like uh, Kalamkari is involved in uh, 23 uh, steps, like the entire process. If you do the traditional way, it's, it's uh, 23 steps are involved. And uh, from removing the starch to the end product, like boiling and fixing the color, your various process you can um, see in column, hand painted column part. So, and um, it will be like uh, first remove the starch from the cloth and then mixing that with the cow milk and uh, karakai. It's like one by one, and we have to, for each process, we have to leave the cloth for like certain amount of time. So, it's a very laborious process. If you want to, uh, the sari to be done, it will take at least three weeks. From wow. uh, right from boiling to the finishing uh, end product. Okay, so that's that's quite a lot, and that's uh, that's a process for a hand painted, fully hand painted kalamkari, right? Yeah, fully hand painted. Sir. Okay, so uh, if you were to look at uh, an interesting part in the process, is of course the colors you you use in a kalamkari. So how many colors are actually there in a kalamkari? Do you use natural dyes, vegetable dyes? What 
you know, I'm just interested to know uh, what happens in the coloring process. In the olden days, like basic colors are black, mm -hmm. red, yellow, uh, blue, and green. These are the basic colors we have in Kalampari. Okay. Uh, uh, colors used are all uh, natural, and uh, black is from iron rust and jaggery. Okay. And uh, red is from surudu chakka. It's a tree bark. Okay. And alum. And uh, alizarin also we uh, use, and um, uh, blue is from indigo plant. Yeah. And yellow is from pomegranate rind and uh, the haldi. Yes. Which we use in cooking and everything. That's the regular haldi we use for the yellow. Yeah. And if we mix uh, blue and uh, yellow, we it will turn to green. Correct. Green color is generally used for rakshas, and blues are generally used for uh, Rama, Krishna. We, we have different colors like uh, where to use for the mythological, especially for the mythological themes. Yeah. We, we have some particular colors to be used for particular gods and goddesses. Right. And then you, uh, the permutations and combinations of these five colors must give you a large palette of 100 plus colors to use, right? We have like, uh, I don't know how many colors, like we have shades, like if you ask for a black, we can give you 10 different uh, variations in black. And secondly, it depends on the climatic condition. If we do the black in summer, it will be like really thick and uh, uh, dark shade. And mm -hmm. if we do the same black in winters, the color will change. And if we do the same black in uh, rainy season, it, the color will change. So it, Basically, the colors depends on climatic conditions. Okay, well, that's interesting. So, have you ever had any challenges, uh, you know, like um, a typhoon or a storm or a heavy rain, flood, etc., you know, coming in the way of your production? Uh, what, what do you do in some times like that? Generally, my production is... Uh, uh, mainly depend on uh, climatic conditions. Hmm. So, what generally we do is like uh, we plan ahead six months ahead in uh, uh, time. So if there is a sudden uh, ray, uh, rains, like because we stay near Chennai, so a lot of uh, hmm. um, hurricane, whatever this thing is there, the heavy rain, sudden rains and everything, we will cope up with uh, that uh, this thing. So we tell all the designers and uh, whoever we take with the orders from, that look at the process, we, we have to undergo to fulfill a perfect piece. So we need at least 45 days to yeah. 65 days. Like three mm. months, we generally we last and um, we will uh, do and uh, deliver the pieces on time. Okay. So there's also a general myth because this is, um, you know, vegetable dyes and natural dyes and even real customers like me. Uh, generally fear that, uh, you know, oh, will this color fade over time? Uh, you know, will it start becoming dull and like a dishwash, uh, you know, kind of cloth? Uh, does that happen with Kalamkari? What uh, and if what are the precautions one must take to maintain? So, if you could answer both of that. Mm, yeah, art is generally mix the color co colors and everything. If we do the colors properly and treat the cloth really well, with don't do it like immediately, instant. If you want kalam kari sari, it will they will give, but the entire process is will not be done properly. So the colors will run. Hmm. So with my in kalam creation, we are in the field for past twenty three years. Till now, not even a single sari is like the color gone. We don't have any complaints basically. We try to do the process, though it's laborious and uh, time taking. We try to do the entire process in a traditional way. And uh, when you wash a kalamkari sari, just uh, don't uh, soak it in uh, harsh detergent. Mm. Use a mild detergent and uh, dry it in uh, shade. Nothing will happen. I think whatever you are wearing is a, like a uh, seven year old sari. Yeah, absolutely. So yes. still the colors are the same. So it's, it's not true that kalamkari colors will fade and you have to take proper care. What happens if you're staying abroad like me and you know uh, you want to actually uh, do a dry clean because you may not always have the possibility of washing it at home. Is dry clean safe for uh, sarees like this? Yeah, yeah, you can do dry cleaning. There is no problem. There's no problem. 
so the, i i remember when i bought uh, my kalamkari sarees you had told me that you know moisture is not good for kalamkari so even when it comes from a dry clean you kind of just open it out and don't just keep it straight into the cover yeah i got like a few um, inquiries like why my kalamkari is like uh, uh, spotted my sari is spotted uh, spots are coming on my sari so i told them like these are these clients are from basically either chennai or bombay hmm. so there the moisture is more uh, so because of the sea and everything so generally i uh, tell them to whenever you get a sari from a dry cleaner or from a topi just open the sari and keep it outside for a minimum of uh, half an hour hmm. then it will be dried properly and you can uh, put it uh, inside at the cover nothing will happen so only thing it should not be moisture percentage should not be there moisture should not be there uh, while it, it ironing or uh, this thing yeah okay got that and um, so perfume etc there is no problem it doesn't react with the vegetable dye or anything of that no 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 problem with the perfumes or uh, anything but with uh, lime hmm. the nimbu yeah 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 nimbu water some colors will react and uh, it will fade away yes correct so per, with perfume we didn't get any complaints but with nimbu yes yes okay so if you have any uh, a stain or something on the saree it's always better to wash it with hand wash with water and it, it's a, i prefer i i uh, suggest all my clients to wash the hand painted sarees uh, in uh, house only so that uh, but with the cold water not yes. with the hot water or anything because already during the process we wash the sari so many times and finally we will boil and make the colors fix so color uh, colors won't run hmm. only thing you have to take little bit while you are washing the sari that's it and dry it in shade nothing will happen okay and um, you know there is this uh, very peculiar smell which comes in a kalamkari sari uh so wh- why what is that smell and why do you need to have that smell in a kalamkari saree the smell in the saree is because we uh, uh dip the saree in milk hmm. uh and uh, myra balam it's a local available fruit so that is the binding agent for the rest of the colors so right. that is the first process and in olden days we used to bleach the sari with um, uh goat dung so the extra color will move and the fabric will turn once we uh, turn to white color once we dip the sari in cow milk and uh, karakai hmm. the sari will uh, turn to creamish color okay to get back to the natural white color we used to dip it in cow dung and uh, Uh, we used to uh, sprinkle uh, water after applying the cow dung it's a layer of cow dung is cow dung or sheep dung is applied and then we used to sprinkle the water on that hmm. so it's like um, it's it's a process but uh, nowadays we are not doing uh, to remove the bleach we are not doing uh, using that technique okay. so and nowadays we are Uh, adding lot of um, karpur in the final stages mm. when we wash the sari boil the sari so but the smell will be there i i don't say the smell is like completely gone from the sari nowadays but uh, 10% to 20% it's there so that's the authentic uh, kalamkari sari that's the authentic kalamkari and and uh, yeah. it is required to preserve the uh, to keep the colors fast to the sari right yeah yeah That, that kind of explains now tell me we spoke a bit about materials so a question in my mind is uh, what are the materials that naturally uh, look good on a kalamkari are there any materials which are definitely no nos for kalamkari i mean the colors won't catch or they won't last is there any taboo kind of materials in anything mixed with polyester hmm. colors won't come out uh, nicely like okay. uh, you can see this is a tassa sari okay so you can see all the blacks reds yellows blues and right. greens in this sari yes so on tassa this will come out nicely right and this is a cotton one 
Yes. And cotton also colors will come beautifully. Yes. So if and this is a crepe sari. Okay. So if you see the crepe on crepe, the colors are little bit dull compared to cottons and uh, tassels. Yeah. And this is a chiffon sari. Hmm. On chiffon, we can't do like uh, too much of. Uh, we can't use a lot of colors. Hmm. Because you can see the same black is used uh, in this in all the products, but the absorbing capacity for uh, is uh, different for each fabric. Hmm. So um, we use uh, basically hand looms. We try we try to encourage uh, hand loom weavers and everybody. Right. So we try to use pure hand looms and uh, pure kanchi and. Uh, I think this is what I'm wearing is a mangalgiri. It kind of catches very brightly in that too. You are wearing a Mangalgiri sari, and I want to show you something, uh, Kamla. This I think you picked up how many seven years back? Yeah, easily. This is very one of my oldest so, saris. Till today, clients send me this picture. Okay. And ask for the same sari. Okay. Wow. This design actually I started in uh, two thousand, and oh. uh, I love personally. I love uh, mantras and. Um, God figures and everything. People ask, and uh, I love indigos also. So we started doing in indigos, like you can see a home indigo yeah. here on my blouse. So uh, in uh, Rajasthan, block printing is really famous, but uh, mm. off late it started like uh, fading off. Mm. So I want to revive that also. So I started mixing um, block printed and uh, hand painting. So that's how block printed and hand painting on Mangalgiri started uh, like 10 years back. Okay, and even now it's an evergreen design, and you know things yeah. like don't fade, right? With time, yeah. that's very good. So I, I, that brings me beautifully into the next question I wanted to ask you on designs. So, what are the usually popular designs uh, you have seen in the last twenty years? You know that some which stand the test of time, and you know keep repeating those designs. And what are the newer designs that are coming? Uh, you know that you've been involved with? in. Usually, Kalamkari, we have mythological designs and um, from Ramayana, Mahabharata, Bhagavatam, and Tree of uh, Life, because of a lot of Persian motifs uh, you can see. Because from Iran and everybody, they used to take Tree of Life designs and every uh, thing in olden days. So. Persian influence is there, so the, that's how the Tree of Life is uh, very popular in um, hand-painted Kalamkar. And uh, in India, few uh, people don't uh, wear uh, figures and... Uh, Gods and goddesses on their body. Human figures and uh, birds on their body. So for them, we started doing florals and uh, geometrical designs. Design-wise, each designer have their own... Uh, give their own uh, designs and we'll do according to them. Right. So um, the designs themselves evolved over a period of time because of a lot of designers getting involved in the designing process as well, right? Because Actually, we have lotus designs and uh, you can, we get inspiration from the temple uh, pillars and everything. A lot of hand-painted Kalamkari designs you can see on the temple pillars and everything. Like this is a very common designs like these temples yes and this one this uh, um, jalar and this uh, veil and th these are the designs you can see in any of the any uh, hindu temples you can see these designs so quite like uh, you know i did a like, previous week i did a session on kanjivaram so you know they, i think most of our weaves are painting they take inspiration from nature and surroundings uh, around us so the flora the fauna the animals yeah. The temple yeah Kind of flow into our uh, weaves and uh, paintings, right? You know, your famous Jugalbandi uh, design, you experimented with a lot of combinations, uh, you know. Uh, yeah. Design. So tell us something about that. When initially I started, I started on Mangalgiri fabric because I want to help the weavers. So that's how I ended uh, doing with Mangalgiri. So then after like four or five years, people started asking me, Mamta, why Mangalgiri? Why don't you try in different fabrics? So then I said like, Chalo, I will experiment with, uh, I want to combine two techniques so, so that this weaver will uh, have uh, his own orders. At the same time, Kalamkari will move on. Like how you see this is a ikat sari. 
Yes. This is ikat and this is like kalamkari. I mixed two and I made uh, this like that. I did whatever you are wearing. It's a block printed from Rajasthan right. and uh, hand painted palu done in Kalamkari. And uh, we have mixed. This is chicken curry. Hmm. So interesting. Chicken curry and kalamkari. So this the art in india we have so many um, art forms so i want to do, do i love to travel basically that's how all this will happen because i love to travel so wherever whenever i go i will try like what is their speciality that's how lucknow chicken curry and kalam curry came and when i traveled with like uh, to kanchi i love to do a kanjivaram and kalam curry mix mm. So I keep on like I work for like twenty four by seven. Keep on thinking on designs and what to do, what next, what next, because we have to plan ahead for one year. So we keep on thinking about the designs and everything. So that's how we do a lot of experiments. Now next we are planning to do Tanjivarams, Kalamkaris, and um, Kachwak. Wow. Catch work from Gujarat. Yes. But it's going to take a lot of time. But uh, And uh, for 2021, I have a huge order. Working on that order, I have to go to Kutch and then sit with that particular embroidery tribe and then I have to train them according to my colors and everything. So Kamla, next time, whenever you are in India, please try to visit our uh, unit in Tirupati. Definite. 100%. I want to do that. I want to see the uh, see the work firsthand because it's one thing to hear and another thing to actually see it, right? Yeah. And 2021 for the summer, Gaurang is doing one of the big show with Kalamkari. So we started experimenting from now so the result will be uh, we need not fight at the end of the day we need not fight <laughs> so we started the design developing Mm-hmm.